All right, good morning, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving to y'all. Uh, got a video to do. Recap last night's game. Three games and uh, everything whittled down to what's on the board. All right, so uh, first game last night, the Danbury Hat Tricks travel to Binghamton and take on the Black Bears. All three games had a similar theme. The road team scored first, and the home team ends up with a victory. So, uh, kind of an interesting night. All right, so in Binghamton, it's uh, Connor McCollum and Sam Levecci between the pipes. Uh, things get started very early for the hat tricks. It's all hat tricks in the first couple of minutes. Sam Dabrowski uh, scores at 3:04. And he's pumped, almost hurt himself on the celly, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's one nothing Danbury. But uh, not too long after that, it's just two and a half minutes later, or just a little over two and a half minutes, uh, Brennan Stanko, the lead scorer for the Black Bears, he gets the Bears on the board. And then at 14.55 uh, later in the period, uh, Tyson Kirkby scores on the power play. It's the only power play goal of the night. And it's 2-1 to one in favor of the Black Bears. Um, for, at first, shots were like 6-1 to one in favor of Danbury. But at the end of the period, it was 15-8 Binghamton. So the defense really clamped down uh, in that first period for Binghamton. Uh, second period, Josh Fletcher, he scores. Um and, uh, you know, it looks like Binghamton's starting to pull away, but late in the period, Daniel McKittrick pulls the hat tricks to within one, and uh, it's a 3-2 game. Uh, shots Danbury controlling that period, 16-9, uh, going through two periods. Shots are even a 24-piece. Um, and then it's all Black Bears from there on out. Uh, it was... Uh, Brendan Stanko scoring at 3.48. And Brendan Stanko scoring again at 7.02. Toss the hat. Um, yep, he gets his hattie. That's the first hat trick by a Binghamton player this year. And then closing things out, uh, the uh, hat tricks pulled, uh, pulled McCollum a couple of times to try and gain the extra attacker. It backfires. Samaro gets an empty net goal at 18-20, and it's a 6-2 final. Good crowd this year for the Black Bears on the Thanksgiving Eve game. That's about 500 fans more than they had last year. So in the game, McCollum goes 34 for 39, um, and uh, he did make several impressive saves. Um, the defense just wasn't the same early in the game um, towards the end of the first period. Uh, Jared Yao gets caught up in a freak collision, and he's gone for the game. Looked like a shoulder injury. Um, we're not sure what's going on there, but we'll try and keep you up to date on that. Uh, so, yeah, that hampered uh, Danbury on the blue line quite badly. Um, Sam Dabrowski had a goal. Dan McKittrick had his goal. Uh, Stanko had his hattie. Uh, Levecci, he, uh, he makes uh, 32 of 34 saves. And uh, Stanko's teammate from college, Dakota Bond, he gets three assists for the night. And so there we go. That's the first game. Second game, we move to Watertown, New York. Uh, yeah, I know a lot of you are freaking out because I'm wearing this. Uh, takes on the Rockers. And again, the Rockers are the ones that get off to the strong start. Now, uh, the underlying characteristic of this game was basically everything was recorded as a shot on goal. Uh, I mean, from actual shots to just really weak tricklers, you know, everything was a shot on goal. Uh, so as you can see, the, the shot total was greatly inflated, uh, kind of exaggerated. But Motor City is the team that gets off to the, the hot start. Scott Koash. He scores a 1354. Uh, Danny Vanderweel adds a power play goal at 1826, and it's 2 0 Motor City. And even though the shot uh, total, supposedly, uh, was pretty close for the first period, it was 23 to 17, um, 
Motor City seemed to be in control of this game, but uh, I tell you what, Watertown really uh, pulled out a character win here. Um, and actually, if you look over the last three games, Watertown has played extremely well. Uh, so Trevor Lord scores at 839 of the second period to start the comeback. Um, only blemish on the game for the Wolves was uh, Tate Leeson getting a match penalty for a spearing incident. This is like the fourth spearing incident in the last week. That's got to stop. Um, ridiculous. Uh, anyway, we get to the end of the second. It's 2-1. to one. Motor City still with a decided shot advantage, 40-26 to 26 at that point. Uh, but then the third period, Watertown really took control. Uh, it forced Trevor Babin to make several, several very difficult saves. Uh, so finally, Chase Dabari pulls the Wolves even at 15.52. And uh, both goaltenders, uh, Eloy Bouchard and Trevor Babin, standing tall in their mats. They're both looking like nothing's going to beat them. And so we go to overtime. Uh, Trevor Lord uh, makes a stretch pass to, I think it was Botero, uh, that uh, got past the uh, Motor City defense. Uh, Babin was forced to make two incredible saves, but uh, the juicy rebound comes out and Trevor Lord picks it up and puts it home at 4-10. It's a 3-2 win for the Wolves. 752 very elated fans uh, were able to take that game in. Uh, so Trevor Babin ended up stopping 44 of 47, um, still playing like the best goalie in the league. And uh, in the meantime, uh, Trevor Lord also had an assist on a Dabari goal, so he factored in all three goals, um, continuing his amazing year. Um, and uh, Eli Bouchard... Uh, officially stops 54 of 56 in 64 minutes played. Uh, his last two outings have been outstanding. And even uh, Josh Rosenvig for the Wolves, um, even though his last time in net was a 2-1 to loss to Danbury, he played extremely well in that game. So the goaltending really, really cranking up for the Wolves. All right, finally, uh, down south for the battle for the Bayou. Uh, the ba Baton Rouge Zydeco played their first road game of the year uh, in Mississippi to take on the Seawolves. And uh, I could not believe, in spite of the fact that there were tons of shots on goal, which I expected, uh, that the score was so low. Both goaltenders uh, barring the door and... Uh, Amazing. So, yeah, Austin Weber, again, for the road team, he gets the first goal. He gets a shorty at 8-17. Um, on the same power play, uh, Hugo Koch, he was the boss. Uh, he gets a power play goal, 9-44. It's 1-1 at the end of one. Shots were 23-13 to in favor of Mississippi. You, you know Mississippi is going to generate a ton of shots. Um Goalies in this game, by the way, were Greg Hussey for uh, for the Zydeco. I was a little surprised. I thought it was uh, Harney's turn, but nonetheless, Hussey was in goal. And uh, Blake Wayrick is finally back from uh, the uh, the injury he had sustained, finally felt healthy enough to play. And boy, did he play. All right, so in the second period, nothing, no, no score. Um, the teams are battling back and forth. And uh, as the game wore on, you could tell that this was going to be a nail biter. So finally, 302 into the third period, Dalton Anderson, who was uh, acquired by the Seawolves not that long ago, uh, he ends up in, on the uh, score sheet, gets his first goal of the year. And uh, so it's three to one, excuse me, two to one at this point. Uh, Baton Rouge does everything it can to try and generate good chances on Wayrick. Uh, Wayrick made a couple of big saves. And finally, uh, Baton Rouge is forced to pull Hussey. And uh, just 
uh, three seconds after Hussey got off the ice, uh, Hugo Koch puts the puck into the empty net, and it is a three to one win for the Mississippi Seawolves. Uh, Hussey starts 47 to 49 on the night. Um, the loss is not on him. Um, meanwhile, Weyrich stops 47 to 48. Uh, what, a, what a debut for the year. So, uh, yeah, Weyrich got hot and uh, just the right time, too. So there you go. Uh, Hugo Koch with two goals on the night. Dalton Anderson with the game winning goal. And uh, it was a nice crowd of 2,500 on hand to take that in. As you can see, I have the updated uh, record for the teams up above where they stand in the standings. And uh, so, yeah, it was an interesting day. We've got a full slate of games on Friday and Saturday. So make sure to enjoy that. And in the meantime, we're going to say thank you so much for watching and listening. Um, before coming on, I did uh, a search and found out that there are now uh, well over 900 followers for uh, for the Fed League Flash. Thank you to all of you. And uh, looks like we're going to hit 1,000 pretty soon. All right. So you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. And we will catch you back here on YouTube on Saturday. Have a good one.